So, what's new in El Capitan? Number one, you can complete reminders from the notification. If you haven't upgraded, now you will. Number two, notes are cool now. Once you've upgraded to El Capitan on your iOS device, notes, go to your accounts and hit upgrade, upgrade notes. And in a note, hit the squiggly line and you can draw. Yeah, but not in El Capitan, unfortunately. You just need El Capitan to see the notes that you've made on your iOS device. But you can add checklists and files like audio, PDFs, and photos. Number three, share links to notes via right click or using the share menu in Safari. You can also share two reminders. Share files on your desktop or from mail. And you can create folders to actually organize your notes. So notes are cool now. Number four, Safari tabs can be muted. If you have ads or YouTube or whatever playing, mute the tabs. I've wanted this for so long. Thank you, El Capitan. Number five, also tabs can be pinned, which I guess you could do in other browsers, but look, drag it to the left. It turns into an icon and will be there when you open new windows. Number six, uh, reader gets some love. Change the page color and the font to make it easier to read. Number seven, command one through nine takes you to the corresponding tab. But if you use these commands for favorites like me, you can turn that off in preferences, tabs. Just in Safari, develop responsive design mode. Booyah. Number eight, split view. This is kind of awesome. Click and hold the green button on any window and choose a side, then choose the window to pull up on the other side. And you can write instructional notes for videos while referencing the app you are talking about. I wrote this paragraph in split screen and didn't proofread it. It's actually putting the windows in full screen view. So to get out, you have to close one window, go back to the other, which is in full screen and close it, which is annoying, or open mission control and simply close that desktop. You can only select windows in your current space or desktop. However, if you have a window in full screen, use mission control to move another window to that full screen and it will split with it. You can even move the divider to give one window more room or less room. And if you move a window by itself to a new space in mission control, it gets its own full screen view. Number nine. You know how, especially if you have multiple monitors, you can lose your mouse cursor? Well, go ahead and shake your mouse. Voila, large mouse, easier to catch. Number 10, in Finder, when you control click any file, then hit option, the copy turns to copy path name. You can now copy the path, making it awesome for directing people to files on external servers and for terminal. Number 11, mail opened in the wrong desktop when I opened it the first time, and for some reason added my Gmail without asking, how did you even do that? But I'll forgive it because now you can swipe left or right for unread or delete, just like on iOS. And it requires you to really swipe all the way, so I don't foresee accidentally deleting stuff. When you get El Capitan, you have some startup tips, and the startup tip says you need two fingers to swipe, but that's talking about a trackpad. With the magic mouse, it's a single finger swipe. Also, in Mail Full Screen, if you have multiple new messages or replies, they now come up in these tabs uh, in one window, and then they go down when you want to go work with your main mail window. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Number 12, Spotlight now does weather. If you can bring up the right thing. And stocks. Uh, you can move the window around too. I'm not sure. I guess you couldn't do that before. I'm still an Alfred fan, but I do like the weather feature. Spotlight is also supposed to be getting smarter when it comes to natural language, like emails from Mia. 
Um, uh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a hit or miss. I might try rebuilding my spotlight index and see if that helps. The first time I did it, it pulled up a spam message. It was in no way related to anything. I just found out mail does the natural language thing too, and it's actually awesome. Number 13. For the app store in your system prefs and in iTunes prefs store, you can now set it to let you download free stuff without typing in your password. Thank goodness. Also, if you don't use this uh, connect for Apple Music, I found out you can turn it off by going into preferences, parental, and disabling it. <laughs> However, once again, I cannot hide my iCloud purchases. If you know a way, please tell me. Number 14, double clicking a window can zoom or minimize. You choose in doc prefs. I'll change it to minimize and voila. Number 15. So there's this new thing called system integrity protection, and I don't really know all the details. Please look it up yourself, but it's supposed to protect certain important stuff from being modified. I guess this is to help with viruses or whatever, but it also makes it hard for certain apps to do their job, like default folder X, without which I slowly die inside every time I have to manually navigate to an open folder in a safe dialog. <sighs> I guess there's a way to turn off the SAP that requires restarting in recovery mode, command R, and inputting a terminal command, but I'm not going to mess with it. I think I can make it to an update. Maybe. Hurrah. So, those are your 15 tips. Um, and you may be wondering why I completely left off photos. You can install extensions for photos now. It's probably pretty cool and I'm sure I'll play with it at some point, but photos and I are not quite friends. It's slow and it's clunky and I'm still sore about the loss of events. Next, Maps now has public transit stuff, but um, you have to live in a city that plays nice with Maps uh, and that actually has the transit information. You know, like, I don't know, Portland or something. So, Google Maps, yeah. Also, a bunch of tip lists I looked at mentioned the Finder rename. You know, you right click and in the contextual menu, you can click rename, whoop de doo I mean, it is pretty cool. You can select multiple items and find this and replace it with this finally, but um, it's awesome. Yeah. And it was totally here in Yosemite guys, but now, you know, a couple other things, uh, system prefs general, you can automatically hide and show the menu bar. Yeah. The thing up here, I prefer to have it in on hand. Uh, then also in your iCloud preferences, after going through a couple security layers every single time in your account details, you can see the different devices using your main iCloud account. If you have multiple ones, sorry. El Capitan is pretty cool. It's a nice looking update. Um, there aren't a lot of changes, but they're pretty good changes. And most importantly, nothing broke. I usually don't update to the first update because things usually break, but nothing broke other than default folder X, but whatever. There are, however, a couple of things that I'm disappointed to still not see. Time Machine. I want options depending on which backup drive you have connected. I mean, really. Um, and also, there's no wish list in the App Store still. How am I supposed to remember what stuff I want to buy? I'll end with one note of advice. If you haven't done this in the last few years, open preferences for the apps you use the most. You may find some cool things hidden in there. Me and Fifi say bye-bye.